Hi, I'm Shane Gebauer with Brushy Mountain Bee Farm. I'd like to talk today about our 21 frame extractor. This is a motorized extractor. It'll hold 21 medium or shallow frames radially, which means it'll do both sides of the frame at the same time, or it will hold nine deep frames radially. It does come with baskets that will fit down into the extractor if you want to hang a cappings bag or do frames tangentially, but it's not necessary to use those. The extractor is made of all stainless steel. The basket inside is also stainless steel. There's no plastic in this except for the honey gate, which is food approved plastic. When you're extracting, you do need to keep that honey gate open so that any honey that's slung from the frames doesn't pool in the bottom of the extractor but rather flows right out. If you have the gate closed, the extractor can begin to fill with honey and therefore bind up on the basket and cause undue wear and tear on the motor. It does have a locking mechanism that if I were to close this right now, it would lock on me. Uh, that's a safety feature. It's got a magnet to hold it up, but it's a safety feature so that you can't reach in there while the basket's spinning, uh, nor can anything fall down into the extractor while it's spinning. And so it won't operate unless this lock is engaged. To load the frames into the extractor, again, it's a radial extractor, so you want to make sure your top bar is facing the outside. Just simply lower them down in, and there's little notches in the top reel and bottom reel that hold the frame in place. Whether you're using deep frames or mediums, the process is the same. If you're using deep frames, because it can only hold uh, three frames per compartment, there's three compartments in here, thus nine frames, you want to make sure they're evenly distributed. No matter how hard you try, no matter what, the basket is going to be out of balance somewhat. There will always be one frame that has a little bit more honey in it than the others, causing that side of the basket to be a little bit heavier. So the legs do have holes in the bottom. We do advise you bolt it to the floor or anchor it to a sheet of plywood or a pallet or something of that nature so that you can stand on that uh, plywood or pallet to help stabilize the extractor. Of course, if it's bolted right to the floor, that's the best, but many of us don't want to do that in our kitchens or garages. So a pallet or plywood is, is a nice alternative. I'm going to go ahead and show you how this uh, motorized extractor works because it does have a control box. When I go ahead, I'm going to actually I'll take these frames out here real quick so my, my extractor isn't out of balance. And I've got two baskets in there, so I'll load those in, load this third one in, so everything's balanced and it doesn't walk around on me. There are holes in the uh, in the basket, the extractor basket that those metal baskets fit into. You'll notice now that this is locked and can't be opened. I'll go ahead and whoop, I've turned on my, uh, my control panel already. There are three programs that you have on this as well as a manual mode. First let me show you a little bit about the controls on here. This readout here shows your speed, a percentage of maximum speed. Of course it's not spinning right now so it's at zero. This is the time in seconds that is uh, uh, the, the extractor cycling on. So you can set it up so it'll turn to the left for 60 seconds and then turn to the right for 60 seconds. And then down here are how you actually make those adjustments. So the, start, the stop and start button, this button right here is how you unlock the, the plastic cover. So you can push this, hold it for five seconds. You hear the click and now it will open up. If I close it back down again, it's locked. And again, the extractor won't operate unless that lid is closed. This is uh, how you change direction, left or right. And this is how you change your speed, increase or decrease. And this is how you increase or decrease your time. So let's first try the manual mode. There's program zero, program one, program two, hit it one more time, and I'm in the manual mode. Let's say that I want to run this for, I want to uh, run a maximum of 50%, uh, percent, so I increase this to 50. And I want to run that cycle for, oh, we'll drop it way down here. Just hold that button and it'll scroll on down.
We'll do 30 seconds. Whoops, a little too far. That's all right, we'll do 25. So now I programmed it and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit my start button. And if you listen, at 10 seconds, it'll increase speed a little bit. The basket starts off sort of slow and then at 10 seconds increases. Right now it's running at 50% of maximum speed. That's what the 50 means and you can see it's counting up the time. When it gets to 25, it stops. The but This is flashing, indicating that the extractor is coming to a stop. And we're done. So you can adjust that for 50%, you can increase it up to 70%, uh, whatever you'd like, and of course your time. You can increase your time to whatever you'd like, to a maximum of 300 uh, seconds, which would be five minutes. We'll show you program zero now. There's program zero. We can uh, decrease our, our time. In program zero, what it will do is once it hits the time that we select, it will stop, reverse directions, go the other direction for the same amount of time, and then stop again. There we go. And our speed, let's set our speed for 30%. And we'll start. So again, at 10 seconds, you'll hear the motor increase speed. And at this point, it's spinning at 30% of maximum. That's what I have it set at. And it will do this for our allotted time. Thirty seconds, it stops. Reverses directions. And it will it'll do that uh, until it's done with this and that's and then it'll stop. That's program zero. We go to program wait for that to stop. I've just I've cut it off by hitting the stop button. Wait for it to complete. Okay. I'll do program one. Program one and program two are essentially the same. The difference is that it will do either two cycles or four cycles, either one to the left, one to the right, or two to the left, two to the right. So program one does one in each direction, program two does two in each direction. These differ a little bit from program zero in that they gradually increase speed. So with this, we're only gonna set our time and I'm going to set it for 60 seconds and what you'll see is over that 60, time, 60 second time frame it will gradually go from 25% up to 70% and 60 seconds is the shortest interval I can use. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this. You'll see it started at 25%. I didn't set that and again at 10 seconds You'll hear the motor change speed. Increased a little bit. Now it's up to 30% of maximum speed. 35. 40. And that will continue to increase over the 60 second time period. Now if I had it set for 30 or 300 seconds rather, five minutes, take longer to go from 25 to 30 to 35 to 40, etc. But before it hits 60 seconds, we'll be at 70%. There's 70%. And again, once it hits 60 seconds, it will stop and it will go through that whole progression spinning the opposite direction. You can hear it braking, coming to a stop and now reversing. Program one does one to the left, one to the right. Program two does two to the left, two to the right. And what you adjust is the time for each cycle. 
That's essentially it for the, for the 21 frame. Once we're done and we wanted to stop it, we stop. We've got to wait for this to go solid, indicating that it's completed its cycle. There it is. And at this point, we can push and hold this for five seconds, the lock. Hear the click and open it up, empty it out, and we're ready to go again. I hope you found this informative. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call or visit our website. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.